Hello Maya students, this is the Extruding and Lofting Curves lesson. Uh, in this lesson you will learn how to create curves and use them to extrude surfaces, loft curves, uh, loft cross-section curves to create a NURBS surface using the loft tool, edit the form of an existing primitive object by moving its CVs, and to create a surface using curves or isoparms, and the bi-rail tool. So when you extrude a curve, it takes that shape and just creates a um, like a line up the y-axis or whatever it is you're doing, um, like a Play-Doh Fun Factory, whatever shape you make. When you squish the Play-Doh through, out comes an extrusion of that shape. So um, for this, I'll just make a wavy line in the top view and we're going to get essentially a curtain. So when I do that, I can go to Surfaces, and I am going to go to Extrude, Option Box. I'm going to Edit, Reset Settings. Sorry. And then I'm going to set this to Distance at an extrude length of 5 units. Go ahead and extrude that and you'll see you get kind of a, like I said, kind of like a curtain. And if you go to your outliner, Windows Outliner, and select the construction curve, you can go to Curves and Reverse Direction on that curve. And if that was curtain was going up from the floor, it will now be going down. If it was going down, like my mine was, it will now be going up. So the direction that you draw the curve in matters where you start the start and end point. So um, if you're not getting the result you want, a lot of times reversing the curve can help. So let's read just new scene and just clear this scene out. Okay, we're going to set the project folder to start here. Click File, Set Project, and set it to Arts 23403. And we can do an open scene and go to bridge.ma and open bridge. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the EP curve tool to create this rope suspension here. So it has to connect with these poles. So let's do a create curve tool EP and then I want to snap to curves and the if you want to use the menu just click up here. I like the keys better so you can use X to snap to grid, V to C to snap to curves, and V to snap to vertices. So I'm going to hold down C and I'm going to place my first point and that will ensure that it's touching the pole. Okay, so We're going to do one on the other side as well. And press enter. I missed by a little bit, but it doesn't really matter. And I'm going to go to control vertex and select the two center vertices and just pull them down. Now we're going to use this as an extrusion path. So instead of just being a straight extrusion, it will follow whatever curve we've created. Uh, I'm going to create a circle, and that's right on the shelf. I just used the shelf. And then shift select the path we just created.
and I need to do a um, path extrusion. Sorry, I'm getting a little confused by my... Okay, here we go. Edit... Uh, no, I'm sorry. Surfaces extrude. Option box. And let's reset the options. The style will be tube. And the result position will be at path. And for pivot, we want to have that on component and press extrude and you will get this uh, entirely too big rope but again these are linked by history so you can just grab that original circle and bring the size down okay so let's create another EP curve I'm going to use the shelf again and we'll do uh, snap to curves or vertices. Let's see. We want it to touch this rope. So uh, I'm going to do snap to curves and I'm going to try to get it on the bottom of that. That should do. And then. I want it to touch the top, the tip of this little spike here. So now I'm going to do snap to vertex, which is V, or you can click up here if you want. And press enter. And I'm going to do that with the other two little spikes here. I'm going to create another EP curve, snap to curves. Cooperating at first. Oh, no, I'm still not cooperating. I'm not thrilled about the position there. I wanted it to be more on the bottom and it's a little bit on the side, but let's just make that one. Let me see if I can get it a little better on this. And whatever is the last tool you use, like the EP curve tool, you can press G and that means again and it will start that tool up again. So I'm going to, again, C to snap to curves and try to get it on the bottom of the rope this time and it is not snapping, it's doing its own thing. Let's undo that and snap to curves again. Still not snapping. Let me select it and see if that makes any difference. Snap to curves. No, why are you, what are you doing? behaving strangely. I'm not fully understanding, but anyway, it should snap to curves. Yeah, now it's snapping. It's on the outside again, but whatever. Screw it. So I'll just um, hold down V to snap to vertex, get it on that, on that point right there, and press enter. And I'm just going to create an extrusion with these three lines. I can just use the same circle there surfaces, extrude, extrude, select the circle, shift select the curve, and extrude. You 
can always size it up or down by playing with that original curve. So, I don't know, something strange happened with the snapping, but I am going to just let it sit there and leave it like that. You can experiment with that a little more and on the other side there and see if you can get it a little a little tighter. So, a little tighter. So, um, we're going to take the two little curves here and make a flag out of it by using the by rail. Um, and they are on the rope curves layer, which is templated. So, what I'm going to do is just redraw them and use the template as a guide. And I'll turn on my EP curve tool. C to snap to curves. Now it's doing more like what it should be doing. No, I got something wonky again. One more try. C to snapped curves. I'm just trying to get it about where that line starts and then on the other side same thing. Press enter. You can press G to, well apparently not right now, but usually you can press G to get the last tool again. C to snapped curves and I'm going to get the bottom line here. There we go. And I'm going to press F8 to go to component mode and drag out a selection that includes the center vertices. Then I can take that and just curve it down until it roughly matches the example guide. And to get the flag surface itself, we're going to do a loft. So you want to click on Surfaces, Loft. And that will create basically um, a surface that spans from one curve to the other. Uh, in the next example, you'll use a loft tool to duplicate surfaces on a coiled, uh, to duplicate curves to create a s coiled surface. So let's do a new scene and don't save. Okay, we're going to create a NURBS primitive circle and spin it around to create a lovely noodle. So if you go to create uh, NURBS primitives circle and in the channel box, set the translate x to 3 and rotate y to negative 90. Right up here. Again, if you're not seeing the channel box, check these tabs right here. And you should uh, be able to get to the channel box. Does that rotate x? That's rotate x negative 90. Okay. And it's still not getting rotate x. There we go. By default, the pivot point is at the center of an object when it's created. To do this, we need to change it to be at the origin, the world origin. To edit the pivot of an object, press the home key on the PC or the D key on the Mac, um, and that's with your move tool active. And I think, nope, it's D on PC as well. That's different since last time. Okay, so, and we're going to press X to get it to snap to grid because we want it right on the origin. So, and the reason we're going to do this, if you watch it rotate, is so we can get a spiral effect with our um, duplicate special. So let's go to Edit, Duplicate Special, Option Box, Edit, 
reset settings and the translate we're going to translate at one on the y so each duplication is going to go up one unit the rotate is going to be 45 degrees on the y so that each unit uh, each duplication um, turns by 45 degrees and then we're going to do a 10 copy duplicate so when you press duplicate special you will get this spiral and usually it lets you get away with doing a selection by just dragging it out it may or may not we'll give it a shot so let's do a surfaces uh, loft uh, nope that's no good undo so let's do them one at a time all right so right up the line here just shift select each one until you've got all of them selected and then we're going to do a surfaces loft and you get a lovely noodle or if you want to take it further it can be a telephone wire or whatever you like okay let's go ahead and open the scene called slipper.ma and we do not need to ch uh, save the changes And we're going to select the two curves uh, and create a loft between them. It's important that they have the same number of CVs to uh, make a clean loft. So to create the sole of the slipper, same thing, just select those two curves and go surfaces loft. Uh, we can delete the original curves just to clean up. We don't need them anymore. And there they are. Now we're going to use the by rail tool to create a strap for the sandal. By rail is a combination of loft and extrude. So it extrudes it along two different paths. You have to have one profile curve, the path that it follows, and then two rails. One, I'm sorry, one profile curve and then two rails that are the path that it follows. The profile curves must also be touching both rails. You will create two curves that are attached to the isoparms at the edges of the slipper top. So, and let's rename this slipper top. And right click on slipper top to go to isoparm. And we're going to select the isoparms at the edge of the lofted surface. One, two. So shift select the second one. You can turn on the visibility of the strap curves layer for reference if you wish. And let's put that on a template. So let's go ahead and turn on the EP curve tool. Mine is still in my most recent tools. You can always click create uh, curves, EP curve. And I'm going to snap to vertex. I'm going to use my V key to do that. I'm sorry, I meant to say snap to curve, not vertex. I'm going to use my C key to do that. And I will do the same thing on the other side and press enter. Turn my EP curve tool back on. Snap to curves. We'll get the one in the back here. So, uh, shift select the second curve. I want to use.
use the outliner if you're having a bit of trouble. And I'm going to press F8 to go to component mode and select those center vertices. Just lift them up so that it's got a bit of a curve and then these are going to go a little higher and come forward. So, like that. Um, with the two profile curves touching the edge isoparms as the rails, you can use the by rail tool. Select a curve and select the other one. It doesn't matter which one first. Let's go back to object mode. My curves were actually already selected, but there we go. Now right click on the slipper top and go to isoparm. This is a tricky selection, so it might take a few tries. We're going to shift select one isoparm and then the other so that these two lines should be yellow. And then we're going to go to surfaces, by rail, there it is, by rail 2 option box. And we're going to have this non-proportional, well, let's reset settings first. Okay, and then non-proportional. And we can click by rail 2 now. So there's our slipper surface. Um, we do want to have the geometry kind of spread out over the, the topology should be kind of spread out over the surface. So we're going to rebuild it to do that. Go to surfaces rebuild if I can find it uh -huh. option box second from the last so option box reset settings set the number of spans U and V to 3 and click rebuild. And the surface is rebuilt with spans in both directions, nicely evenly spaced. And let's rename that toe thingy. Okay, now we're going to grab the slipper top and press control D to duplicate it or command D on a Mac and move it down just a tad and we're going to grab those edges and um, create lofts to give it its thickness because a slipper is not just a um, flat plane or even a curved plane. Uh, with the previous lofts you use curves you're going to do that again with the edge of the slipper sole However, in this instance, the curves will be referred to as isoparms. They're curves that already exist in the surfaces. So select that isoparm and then sh do -do -do, right click on the second surface and shift select the next isoparm. And are we doing a loft? I think we're doing a loft. Yep, surfaces loft. And now we're just going to spin it around, do the same thing on the other side. Right click, isoparm, select the isoparm so it's yellow. Right click on the sole, isoparm, and then shift select so that's yellow. And let's go to surfaces, loft. And we've got ourselves a lovely slipper. So. Uh, you probably could technically do the same thing with the uh, toe strap, but uh, for the purposes of this tutorial, we're done. Let's select everything and group it together so that it all moves as one. Oops, did that wrong. 
Let's do a hierarchy selection. There we go. Oh dear, now that's screwy. Let's check the outliner. Let's see what happened here. Group 5. Uh, I think it's these curves. I'm going to get rid of the curves and we should be good to go. Oh, lies. Let's delete history. Okay, so when you're done modeling, you should delete history. I was going to bring it up on the next tutorial. Um, there's a linkage in here. I th I'm thinking that's what's going on with this, is that there's a linkage that's inheriting the transform of something in the history. So I'm going to delete all by type history turning on inherit transform for slipper side two. Yeah, that was it. Okay. So it was inheriting something that in its construction history that was being moved. So that makes the move look like it's being doubled. It's um, something is moving and then another component of it is moving away. That's a sign that your, um, your main group is um, is inheriting, or if one of your pieces is inheriting an extra transform from the main group. So I just got rid of the construction history. It was one of the construction curves. So it was actually, you know, come to think of it, it was the uh, isoparms. So getting rid of the construction history in this case got rid of that. Um, but it's always a parenting thing. It's, it's inheriting extra stuff. So I'm going to do a new scene and don't save. And let's go into, we're going to create a pair of salt shakers, and we're going to create um, profile curves, which we will skin to make the salt shakers. Uh, let's do a create, NURBS primitives, circle, option box. And let's reset options. And we'll enter the following values. A radius of 4 and number of sections is going to be 24. We're going to use those extra points to um, create a wavy kind of look. So you'll see how that works in just a moment. The radius sets the circle size in grid units. A value of 4 creates a circle with enough size so that you can use the grid for a convenient size comparison. And my grid has disappeared in my top view. So I'm going to go to show and there's grid right there. It's not showing. I would like to show the grid in the top view. And what I'm going to do now is um, create another circle. A circle is a curve that loops back on itself. The CVs are going to work the same way as any other curve. Um, we're going to create another circle inside this one. Create circle. Oops. Curve tools. No. NURBS primitives. Circle option box. And I want to keep the 24 sections, but the radius is going to be 2. Now, um, what I'm going to do is expand my top view and select the outer ring. And we're going to go to component mode, or F8 is probably a better choice. And I'm going to select every other control vertex using shift select and I'm going to press R to scale them down and that gives us this wavy look here 
Okay, so press F8 to go back to object mode. And we're going to do a duplicate special. <coughs> Edit, duplicate special. And this is going to create a number of duplications that will form the body of the salt shaker. So reset settings as always, almost always. I know I didn't do it last time. We'll do a three translation in the Y axis and a scale of 0.93 in X and Z, just basically a tiny scale down. And we'll press four copies and click duplicate special. So this becomes the body of our salt shaker. We loft and it creates a surface over top of it. Select the inner circle. I kind of got it overlapped a little bit here, so there we go. And move that to the Y value of 13. I'm going to do that in the channel box. And increase the scale to 1.33 on all axes. Like so. And we're going to do a duplicate special that will create the upper half of the salt shaker body. So that's the other reason why we wanted 24 spans on these circles is because the loft needs the same number of control vertices. So let's do an edit, duplicate special, option box, reset. And we're going to do a translation of two in the Y on each of these copies. And we're going to do a slight scale up, 1.05, with a total of three copies. OK, so deselect now just to make sure we've got the exact right selection. I won't try to shortcut it this time. And we're going to select the bottom um, curve and then shift select all the way up and loft the surface. And we're going to do a surfaces loft. And we've got the salt shaker body. We'll name that shaker body. Now we're going to create a sphere and use that to um, use that as the shaker top. So let's go into NURB Sphere option box. I want to just reset this to make sure that there's no lingering options. There was some stuff that I did with spheres previously. So just do the reset settings and do a create. And those, those settings, whatever is in the option box, will carry over to the shelf if you click the sphere here or if you click Create NURBS Primitive Sphere without the option box, whatever the, the option box was set at, the sphere will come out with those settings. Um, and we're going to move this up to sit roughly inside the top of the sphere, uh, the top of the shaker body, rather, and size it up to where it just about just barely goes past the the edge. It doesn't matter if this is totally exact, but that works. And then I'm going to smush the top a little bit so that it looks a little a little more flattened. So right click here, control vertices, and I'm just going to grab the top row and Actually, I'm not going to grab them in perspective view. I'm going to grab them in 
front view because that's a more exacting way to get you know it's it's hard to say in perspective view like it's really really easy to do this for example which is not entirely the selection I want I've got a few extras over here and that's because of the tilt in the perspective view so if, if I go to the orthographic view I can select exactly that top line and know that I've got the exact selection that I want so and how much you want this to smush down is up to you but just right about there is good okay I will see you in on the helmet tutorial